So I got to a point where, oh my God, I have to make a video recapping how I did today. I, I, I must make money. I cannot make any mistake. So that became like such a mental pressure on myself that I felt like I missed out on a lot of opportunities I could have maximized on in 2021. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Today, we have a very, very special guest. We have Humble Trader, who has become incredibly popular in our trading community. So thank you for coming on. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Thanks everyone. for having me. <laughs> Thanks for being on here. So I wanted to ask you, Shay, um, a lot of people know you from your YouTube personality. You, I think, recently crossed a million subscribers. So that's awesome. Well, what a lot of people don't know is that before you were a trader, you were in the VFX scene. So how so, did you how kind of transition from the professional world to the trading world? Uh, how did that transition? Yeah, like how did you go from like being in the VFX, VFX world to yeah. finding about day trading? Yeah, so I was in uh, Los Angeles at the time uh, working in VFX. Like I, you work in some studios. Um, and what happens is, when you're in the film industry or TV commercial, you, you kind of are on contract base. So the contract will last like two weeks, a month or two months. And in between, you're kind of uh, like, unless you're very, very, very good, which I wasn't, you wouldn't, you kind of would have to spend some time looking for a job. So that's kind of why I was inspired to find another way to pay rent is because I have so much gap time in between the job I just finished and the next one that I need to find a way to make money. So that's yeah. where I used to like trade and learn trading during those gaps. Those gaps. And then and when I kind of have like, have you know, like, at least some idea of what I'm doing, then I'll do that in the morning from, cause on the West coast, I'll wake up at 5 AM and then I'll kind of get ready, trade a little bit. Uh, market opens at 6.30 AM. So I'll trade till around eight o'clock, 8.30 local time, and I'll go to work at nine or 9.30. So I'll do that, you know, every single day, Monday to Friday, when Got I still it. had a job. Did you have anyone in your family that was involved in the markets or how'd you discover the markets? Um, I found I found one of the really famous gurus with the Lamborghinis. I'm like, I'm sure you guys know who that is. The classic, um, the classic, the same yeah. person that got us all started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, um, so it's him. So I think that he's like the origins, like where everyone got started and how everyone got attracted to the Lambos, right? So that's how I got started. Nobody in my family was ever involved in like the US stock market. I were all immigrants. So they kind of knew something about the war from Taiwan, like the Taiwanese stock market, like they would invest. But the US market's always been like a very foreign concept to us. Did you ever get to work on any movies that we would know? Yeah, uh, Planet of the Apes, the second one and the third. Oh, that's sick! <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, the Lego Movie. Uh, I worked on the second one, so it's not the cool one. The cool one is the first one, but I did the second one. Wow, that's crazy! Um, Angry Birds Movie. I did both of them. Oh, yeah, and the rest is like some really lame ones, but those oh, three are the only the ones. Effects of industry yeah. that we don't know about. Like what's some like secrets that like no one knows that happens like behind the scenes and like VFX. Um, so there's a lot of drug culture, unfortunately. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Good and bad drugs. Yeah. Cause sometimes you really stay up all night till two, 3 AM and you need a way to kind of stay motivated. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, yeah, what else? You know, everyone's really underpaid. You do a lot of favors to make sure you have the next job. You can do a lot of favors. You have to like, like whether you are men or women, you kind of have to like kiss. What's, what's, that, what's that word in, what's that slang? Kiss yeah, 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 you kind of have to do that. And it really sucks. That's one of the reasons I hated the industry. It's like, you cannot get ahead by working hard or doing good work. It's all about like who you know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you could kind of uh, shift gears to like trading a little bit and we could talk about maybe like daily process. Cause like, I don't really know like a lot about like kind of like what you trade, like maybe it's just like me, but um, so I was genuinely curious when we kind of had this interview. Cause I was like, Oh, like we get to learn like a little bit more about her. So yeah. um, what's kind of like your kind of like daily process as far as like coming into the market, like what type of strategies do you trade? What do you look for? 
Um, yeah, maybe we could just kind of start there. Yeah, um, I think the pro my I guess my process has kind of changed a little bit over the years, but I think the ballpark is still the same in which I still wake up early because I'm still on the West Coast. Um, I'll scan. I'll, I'll usually like just open up my scanner, like trade ideas with Benzinga, um, look at the gappers. Um, and then I used to focus a lot on the small caps. That's what changed. I, now I focus more on the large cap stocks. So I, well, I didn't have a lot of money, like the small caps, a uh, dollar to three dollar stocks, five dollar stocks. That's kind of where I was used to focus a lot. Um, and nowadays I trade mostly like the earnings, like the large cap gappers. Like AMD today, Meta the other day, um, you know, Google, that stuff. That's why I focus on now. Um, and then before, I, it would be like small cap stock, and low floats, like the, 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 the LFIN, the BPTH, those really good ones. And that kind of transition during COVID uh, pandemic market to like a lot of meme stocks. That's a lot of large caps. And now I trade like the mega caps. Are you struggling to find the right stocks to trade? Are you making money for one, two, maybe three weeks in a row and losing it all in one day? Are you struggling with sizing up on your trades? Well, I found that the best way to fix these problems is to trade alongside a millionaire trader live on stream with no delays. My Investing Club's new live trading stream is the missing puzzle piece to your trade. Every day at 9 a.m., I share my screens, find the best stocks to trade, and build my watches live. Then, I execute those trades live on screen. It's like you're sitting right next to me as I trade every every single day. Due to the high demand of the screen share, we only have a few spaces available every single month. So if you're seeing this now, it means that space is still available. And here's the best part. If I do not generate $20,000 in realized gains per month on live stream, you do not pay. So go to myinvestingclub.com slash live trading to get 50% off your first month on the live stream. Spaces are limited and filling up quick. What do you have to lose? This may change your life. That's yeah. really cool. Did, did Was it hard for you to transition from like starting out with some small caps and getting into large caps? Because it obviously is such a big difference in like one, it's like less pre-market prep and like, you know, obviously it's just different structure. Was it challenging for you to make the change or were you already like, were you not finding success with small caps before you made the change? Mm, I don't think it was difficult, but I think, I think I've always been, I'm a very organized person in trading, also outside of trading. I like to kind of categorize things into little buckets. So I always trade the small caps in like a generalized generalized bucket, like, oh, small caps, you know, if I want to go long, look for like positive news, day one, day two, you know, it has to be gapped over a certain percentage. So I'll categorize that. And then large caps, it's like, okay, like if I'm looking to buy the dip, I'll buy it instead of at the open, I'll buy it around like 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock. So I kind of always kind of categorize them separately so I can kind of know that, okay, if I'm trading a large cap, I need to do just that. Small caps, I only do that. So I think it, it was also a forced transition because small caps usually kind of, this summer is a little bit different, but small caps, there will be summers before a pandemic that, I wouldn't have any single green trade on the small cap stocks because they will move like 10 cents. And, and I'm not used to that. I didn't realize they are so cyclical that there might be like months in between from you know June to October before I place any successful trades. So I kind of was forced to adapt. If I still want to make money during summer, I kind of have to trade the mid caps, large caps, mega caps. So it's kind of out of necessity, I think. Yeah. Was it yeah. hard for you to find like a strategy with large caps or like, did you kind of base it off something that you've learned in the past or have you tried it all? Have you tried shorting, like longing? Mm. Like, how did you find that breakouts or the like earnings plays were more your, more your speed? Yeah. So for yeah, the I large caps, the when I was trading part-time, I started out with um, just at the end of the day, after I came back from work, I look at the large cap gainers on the day. And if it's during earnings season, you get a lot of like big, runners that trend that really nicely on the first day of the earnings breakout. So what I used to do is a very, very simple strategy. Anyone can do this. I'll, the next day, I'll look at like what's like the key support from the day before, the first day of the large cap breakout. And then I'll try to buy the dip or I'll, if I miss the dip, 
a way for it to continue the trend and break out through the higher day from previous day. So essentially a breakout strategy on second day and it'll go higher. Not always, obviously, but the probability of that success succeeding is really, really high because usually earnings, like if you really, really beat earnings, the stock will run for multiple days. So that's the very, very simple strategy. I used to trade a lot. Um, and then I kind of developed that into, okay, then why don't I just buy the, um, the, um, the stock on day one overnight? Why don't I just swing it overnight? So kind of developed into also a swing overnight strategy as well for the larger cap stocks. So you mostly primarily, you've just been like kind of like longing large caps, um, forgetting about small caps. Uh, was it was it kind of like hard to let go of small caps or you were just like, no, I'm into large caps now. I'm not a small cap trader. Um, kind of like that kind of motto or. No, I, I would say uh, I kind of made that transition after analyzing my trades, like all my biggest losses in 2020 were on the small caps and the biggest gains were not small caps. <laughs> <laughs> So I just, I, I understand they are like the fun, fun, you know, dangerous stocks to trade. I, I feel really excited and, uh, you know, I, I feel like I feel really excited to trade them, but I have to kind of face the reality, like small caps when they, if I was shorting, cause I got really into shorting small yeah. caps in 2019 and 2020. So, and then 2020, everything went to the moon. So it was really difficult for me that year, shorting small caps, especially a low float. Yeah. So I kind of just, yes, nowadays I still trade them, but it has to be like after it's really extended for four or five days. Like TUP, I didn't trade it until it reached $5 yesterday. So all the way from, the, from when it went from $1 to $5, the four days before that, I didn't touch it at all. So I'm just a little bit more selective on the kind of low float small cap stocks that I want to trade nowadays. Yeah. I still trade them like once in a while. Yeah. I, like, I, I just want to, yeah. I just want to like trade it, get itchy for yeah. you. Know? You, can't, you can't get away from it. It's yeah. The thing is, they're so exciting and there's so much money to be made, but mm -hmm. a lot of the more conservative day to day money could be made from large caps and yeah. it has no locate fees. Most of the time, the commissions are low, if not free. So there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, have mm -hmm. you ever thought about trading Forex or crypto or anything like that? Um, not Forex. I have thought about trading crypto. Um, but by the time I was so, so um, late into the trading crypto game, by the yeah. time I was trying to set everything up and figure out how I was going to transfer money into my wallet to buy this and that. <laughs> The, the market started tanking. And then with what have happened with the FTX last year, I was just like, forget it. There's no, there's no point. <laughs> yeah. What do yeah. your parents think about your trading? Because I grew up in a Middle Eastern family and unless I was making a bunch of money, they just kind of rejected the idea of trading. Mm -hmm. So how was your family when you told them that, hey, you know, I'm going to quit my job at VFX. I'm going to become a full-time stock trader. Did they give you any backlash? Well, I, um, I knew they wouldn't understand, so I didn't tell them. Oh, wow. You didn't tell yeah, them? Yeah, okay. I didn't tell them until like, I had already quit my job and was full-time trading for a year. Wow. So, Damn. yeah, I mean, I knew, I knew it's, not like, it's not like I needed them to support me or financially, or and I was already living on my own. So I, I just knew like it would just create unnecessary stress for me if I had told them. So it's my money. I do what I want. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I mean, you know, it's, it's, yeah, you just gotta be smart about it. I mean, understand your family, obviously, but like, I, yeah. I know my parents will like worry a lot and like nag at me. So I just didn't tell them. Yeah. yeah. Did you have some sort of savings built up from the career before you said, you know what, like, let me just have a little bit of a nest egg first and then mm -hmm. I'll kind of transition over. Yeah. So, um, I saved up about one year of living expenses outside of the, my trading account before I uh, kind of quit cold turkey. Yeah, because a lot of people think that trading, all right, I'm going to become a trader. I'm going to quit my job tomorrow. But the reality is that it takes time. Yeah. You need to be able to save up a little bit of a nest egg, have a little bit of a cushion so that you don't feel like you're trading to make money. You know, how many mm -hmm. times have we traded forcing trades to make money and we end up losing money? So I think that's very important. I'm glad that you built up a nest egg before that because 
a lot of people listening, I feel like they may have the wrong idea of trading because we got into it for the Lambo, the get rich. I'm going to make money. <laughs> yeah. Fuck this, fuck that. I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to trade on the laptop and this and that. But the reality is that it, it, trading is more complex than that. If you want to make more money than a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer combined, it's going to be a little bit tricky. And yeah. because it's going to be a little bit tricky, it doesn't mean that you should be quitting your job. In my opinion, I think most people should just trade part time. You know, for me, at least I make most of my money in the first hour. So if I didn't have MIC or community or other things to do, you know, it's a perfect way to stay busy throughout the rest of the day. So I don't think anyone should quit their jobs to trade full time. If anything, I think that trading should be a way to supplement your income, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. When I first started like trading in LA, I was just trying to pay, make enough to pay rent. I remember I was living in a three bedroom apartment, sorry, two bedroom apartment with two other roommates. So wow. one person was li living in the living room and we were paying, I think, 600 or $700 each. So I was just trying to make that in one month. So it, it started out doing that. And obviously, like you scale up slowly, but that's why I wanted to pay rent in LA. That's it. I never like, of course, in the beginning, I thought I was going to get rich. But like once reality hits, it's like, okay, I'm ha happy just paying rent um, and then help with student loans. Eventually, I pay more bills. But yeah, I think part-time trading is a way to go, at least for the first two years for most people. Was it was it hard for you to like mentally adjust to like having a set paycheck before? Because I assume you're doing decently well at your other job. And no, then to I go wasn't. to trading. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, you were able to I save up a year's trading. worth of money, a year's worth of money in a trading account. So I think you were doing all right. <laughs> well, <laughs> <You're okay. laughs> my, um, so I think I will say this. If I had a cushy job, I, I don't want to offend any engineers watching this, but I know the engineers now they are, are working 20, 30 hours a week getting paid like 300 grand. If I had that job, I never would have went into trading like come on there was there's no need to um but for me it was really unstable like when i had the job in film production yes i'll make decent amount of money for a couple of months but it's the in between like the one month where i don't have any job that's extremely unstable and stressful for me so because of that i, I it was hard for me to save a lot of money at, at once i kind of worked job and then i like flip stuff on the side i flip couches on the side and i did a lot of yeah, wow, yeah, yeah yeah furniture for oh okay yeah, yeah couches yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like i'll go to the the um like the goodwill goodwill yes yeah. in the beverly hills like a nice area and then My you get some nice stuff store. like not just couches like clothing i found a burberry yeah, jacket good. once oh, wow <laughs> damn <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Someone's grandma passed away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that you, if you want to save up, you kind of have to like, you, you have to think smart. You have to like hustle hard. <laughs> so you went from, you went, you went from a very stressful environment, which was the film production world where you have a job today, but you don't know if you have a job tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You don't know if your funding is going to get cut from the movie. You don't know what's going to drop here or there. You don't know if they're going to change anything. Yeah. And you chose day trading. Yeah. <laughs> what? What led you to make that kind of like, this is really stressful. Yeah. Why not do something that's equally as stressful? So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was it that all of a sudden you went, you know what, if I can handle this, I can do this. <laughs> I think you are right. The stress level for trading is probably even higher. But at least, you know, after the first six months, yes, I, I lost like pretty much blew up a couple of times. At least I understood that if I lose money or make money, it's because it's all because of myself, right? There's no one else I have to rely on or I could blame. Yeah. Whereas when I was working in film industry, sometimes, sure, I, it's me who get it late. But a lot of times it's like due to some other people's, um, you know, progress or the producer had a change of heart, director wants something else. So a lot of you know, different changes because of outside, um, outside scenarios and outside reasons, not because of me. 
I, I, I pretty much prefer it to just be myself responsible for my own outcomes. So more, it was, it was more about that ability to control it. Yeah. The ability to control whether you made it or broke it. Exactly. Yeah. So That's I like that for sure. idea. Okay. Let's say, let's say someone goes out, they quit their job. What would be the first thing you suggest them to learn? Like, would it be like technicals? Would it be fundamentals? Would it be like supply and demand volume? What would be like the number one thing where, you, you know, like that you would say like, Hey, focus on this and not like Bollinger bands or something like that. I tell them to focus on how to get a new job. Yeah, so, that's what ahead. I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's hiring. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think, I never recommend people to quit and like start trading. I feel like anything else is probably a better idea than trading right after you just lost a job. Yeah. yeah. The problem is the industry is so like get rich quick, money yeah. this, money that. So like you don't even think it's stressful. What are you talking about? It's stressful. You make money in your sleep, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think a lot of people don't understand what comes along with trading at the real professional level, which is not easy, but it is extremely lucrative if you could do it the right way. And something that I think is great, Shay, is that you make a lot of content on YouTube to help the newer mm -hmm. struggling traders. So I know that they're in your comments all the time. They're messaging you. They're talking to you. But for the new and struggling traders out there, is there something that you see that is the most common issue that people are struggling with? Yeah. So they usually will try something for like a week and then immediately jump to something else. Yes. So they'll try stock trading for a week. Oh, longing isn't working. Let me try shorting next week. Oh, stock shorting is not working. Oh, let me try options. Yeah. Oh, options not working. Let me let me try, you know, like, you know, crypto instead. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So that's the biggest mistake. I think you need to like at least stick with something for at least a couple of months to really know if it's working for you or not. Yeah, yeah. And then good. they open an Amazon drop shipping account and that's going to oh, change that everything too. that they do. <laughs> they buy a garage full of toilet paper. And How did you know I did that? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's I a mean, fact. Like this. Goes yeah. from trader to drop shipper to Forex trader, right? <laughs> right up the ladder. Yeah. What was that guy that we were making fun of back in like, what was it, 2018, 2019, Trade Neck? Oh, or, trade and head, then yeah. it was... Uh, uh, all the CFD business and stuff like uh, that. And uh, yeah. what was that guy? Trade, trade remember. net, trade, trade net? net, trade net was the guy. Trade but he had a weird, yeah. Weird and then there was that dude that came out with the meme. That's neck was like yeah. from his ears to his shoulders and oh. everybody started calling it <laughs> trade neck. <laughs> it's, it's to be honest, I've not met one successful Forex trader. Oh. Most of them are freaking scammers, man. Every single one. I mean, I don't know about you, Shay, but have you met a single successful Forex trader? I met one that made some money, but he decided to switch to trading stocks. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, I um, wonder why. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So um, what, yeah. what drove you to start posting things to YouTube? I know that that before the before you answer that question, I'll preface to this. Hmm. We we mentioned this before we started the recording, but Humble Traders YouTube channel has now passed a million subscribers. Mm -hmm. So props to Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for all that you do for the community. What what was it during your trading that encouraged you to start posting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when after I went full time trading. What happened is I kind of lost that creative outlet. So I was working in film and VFX. Then I stopped doing that. So there was, I'm, I'm naturally a very creative person. I love making videos, telling stories. I used to write a lot of stories as well. Um, so I kind of lost that outlet. So that's number one. And number two is that because I started out trading part-time, I used to finish all my trading before um, my local time will be 8.30. That'll be 11.30 a.m. Eastern. So that was where I found my success. But when, when I went full time, I was like sit there from nine o'clock market time to four. And I'll sit there for an entire day. I'll make money in the morning and lose everything. Yeah, <laughs> right. <afternoon>. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually what happens. Yeah. So I realized I needed something else, like a side project to either keep me distracted or just like a, like a creative outlet. 
So that's why I kind of turned into YouTube to do both of those things. Yeah, and it was really fun. It started out like a, like a little hobby project. I would work on the evenings and Sundays. It takes so much time. And then now, now eventually, it's like, what, three, four years later, it's like a full-on business. That's crazy. I mean, it's cool, but is it hard for you to do this? Because you're so public and your videos are great, by the way. But is it hard like when you're having like a rough stretch of trading, like when you're like having like some down days or whatever to still post and be like honest? Because like at MIC, we post like day in, day out, like no matter mm -hmm. how good or bad. And do you ever struggle with that? Yeah, for sure. I used to like post a lot more about my trading recap. Like, I used to film recaps every day. Or, or every other day, because every day would be a little bit too much for me. Every other day, I used to do that. I did that for a whole year. And then it got to a point of like, it became a little bit too much for me. I understand, like, I'm sure I'm all for transparency. People w would love to see your wins and losses. I did that for a whole year and I realized it was kind of affecting me and my trading performance. Because whether you made money or you lost money, like at the end of the day, you should be posting and doing the recaps for yourself. So I got to a point where, oh my God, I have to make a video recapping how I did today. I, I, I must make money. I cannot make any mistake. So that became like such a mental pressure on myself that I felt like I missed out on a lot of opportunities I could have maximized on in 2021. I feel like I made a lot of money in 2021, just like every trader in this market. But I feel like I could have made a lot more had I not been so focused on, oh, I got to keep up with the, the video recaps. So I think whatever you do, whether it's a recap, a post, written or a video, you, you have to do it for yourself and you have to do it in a way that serves you as a trader. Yeah, I think yeah. That's, that's super, super, super true because it's a lot of pressure to do that stuff as well because mm -hmm. like I know that when I have like a pretty bad day, the last thing I want to do is get on camera and just say how mm -hmm. much I screwed up, right? It, it kind of hurts you. And then the flip side of it is that if you're always posting and always posting, you almost feel obligated to post and yeah. you may trade a little bit differently based mm -hmm. on your wanting to post. So I used to post a daily p &L for years, daily, daily, daily. And I found myself kind of getting lost in the sauce every time that mm -hmm. I did it. And then at the beginning of the year, I was like, you know what? Let me start that small account challenge. Let me grow that. Let me do the daily PL. and Then after that, I'm just going to relax and do whatever I want. But for me, it's just I totally get it. I totally understand the pressure and props to everyone that does it every day. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, no matter if you post it or not post it, everyone is no one's going to be happy for you. Everyone's mm -hmm. going to be jealous. Everyone's going to yeah. talk shit on you. Everyone's going to say it's fake. Everyone's going to say you're, it's not yeah. real. But at the end of the day, what's the real point? But if it's for you, if you're doing it for yourself, I think that's really important. Something mm -hmm. that I was talking to Jack Kellogg about is uh, his losing days. So something that he told me really, really important that like really stuck to me is like whenever he had like a severe losing day, and I recommend this for everyone, is he would whip out his iPhone and just record himself and the way he's feeling. Like, hey, I just lost a hundred grand today, feeling like shit. You know, making a hundred grand is never as good as losing a hundred grand. I don't need to be doing this right now. I have this, this, this that to improve. And he keeps it to himself. Mm -hmm. He keeps it to himself. And whenever he is feeling down or whatever he needs that reassurance, he just whips out that video for himself. So yeah. I think it's important for people to do it, but to post it publicly, I don't think is necessary, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, for sure. I agree. I think it's fine. It was a lot less pressure when I was smaller. But yeah. now with over, it it with with this much subscriber is I'm great I, I'm I'm I, I'm grateful I appreciate everyone supporting me, but at the same time it's immense amount of pressure and like everyone expects you certain things from you. You get recognized in public a lot. Yeah. Really, that's it's like usually at like really inconvenient times. Yeah. Like one time I'm I'm trying to catch a flight at the airport. Yeah, and then and then I one time I, I was like playing pool, oh, sorry, playing ping pong with my friends at a bar, and then we were all like super drunk, and that's <laughs> not the best. <laughs> the best one is when you're middle of a meal and you're just like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I know, are like pizza sauce all over the <laughs> yeah. face. Yeah, that's, so funny. So, that's no, me no, in no. photos. 
<laughs> people are like, let's take a photo. And I'm like, oh, I got a hot dog stuffed in my mouth. <laughs> a lot of people don't get it. They just think you show up uh, every every week and you make a video and you just record it and it's ready to go. But like, I think a lot of people don't understand how tough that creative process could also be. Because like, how many times are you going to cover level two? How many times are you going to cover VWAP? How many times are you going to cover yeah. this? So like, eventually, the topics that, you know, are interesting almost become obsolete. So mm -hmm. how do you find that creative motivation to create this type of content that people have not seen and content that you also enjoy creating? Because I learned that if I just make content just to create it, it's not like, it's mm -hmm. like a job. Whereas yeah. if you're making content that you're actually interested in, like we're doing this, like this is fun to me. Yeah. So how do you, how do you, uh, what is your creative process like in making these uh, trading videos? Um, I think I would say, cause it's now my fourth year on YouTube. It does get difficult. I want to say every year and a half or so, like I'll run out of completely be out of creative ideas. So I'm actually currently going through a stretch like that myself right now. I'm like, Oh man, I don't know what to make. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so tired of these strategy videos. They work, but at the same time, you know, I only do like five strategies. Like that's all I have. I cannot Correct. create strategy just to put on YouTube and I don't want to do that. Correct. So sometimes I do go back into my earlier ideas or videos and like that will sometimes inspire me, you know, like, oh, four years ago, I pre presented certain things this way. I can try a different way of presenting it. So you're reca yeah. repackaging your original idea. Or sometimes I just talk to other traders, talk to other friends, talk to non-traders. I think I think it's important to talk to people who don't trade and see what fascinates them about the stock market. So that might help you out too. So I do that. I talk to my friends who are not in trading, who are not in, uh, in the stock market, but they want to learn. They don't ask them, oh, what do you want to learn about? Like how, in what kind of way would you learn the most? What like are you? What's your focus on? Are you trying to make you know side hustle money like hundred dollars a day, or are you trying to you know just like pay for your bills, pay for mortgage? Like what's your goal? So just really trying to understand that that also helps, and then and then you, otherwise taking some breaks this helps a lot. Um, like when I was in Europe, I had some couple of decent ideas when I was away from the market and from work. Yeah, but I would say it's normal to go through like, you yeah. know, I would say a couple of months of, oh, man, nothing. I hate everything I, 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 I make. <laughs> There's nothing fun out there. I'm done. I just want to trade. Yeah. I probably have gone through that twice now. Minimum. Do, you, do you have any psychology and discipline tips for any traders like who are kind of like struggling maybe with like the psychology of it all or just like the discipline to just execute trades the right way and execute kind of strategy the right way? Yeah, so execution is the toughest one because you cannot learn execution from reading a book. You have to, like I tell everyone to subscribe to the Dash Trader Replay. It's like $10 extra per month and then retrade everything you either messed up on or you could have improved that day. So I, I used to do that. I still do that quite a bit. I'll probably do that once every two weeks nowadays. That's how I got better with execution because you, you cannot learn execution from, yes, you can kind of learn from seeing other traders charts, but you need to be pressing the buttons yourself. Yeah. So that's, that's, I feel like that's the only practical tip anyone can use to learn execution. Now, psychology wise, um, reading books does help a lot with psychology. Um, there's a, there's a lot of books out there, like, um, trading the zone, um, trade a trader, um, Read and what's that book? The the I'm like running blank. Daily Trading Coach. Yeah, that one helps a lot. But there's a there's um Atomic a Habits book. What's that? Uh, Atomic Habits. That one helps a lot too, with like building a really simple and lean trading routine and not get distracted. That one helps with my um, discipline a lot. But yeah, otherwise it's just I think. Also, outside of trading, if you have like a, um, I don't know if anyone here is in, like has like a workout routine. So I used to be really, really strict with my workout routine. 
Um, that helps a lot because if you have like a um, really strict regimen, that, that's going to carry out into your trading as well. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, I, I, have pretty, I have a pretty stress. strict restaurant routine. <laughs> eating routine is pretty strict. I was going to say, strictly, do any of us look like we have a gym routine? <laughs> yeah, strictly terrible for myself. <laughs> Does that help with trading? <laughs> I, have a, I have a lot of hair care routines. Uh, <laughs> that, that helps too. <laughs> you did some like pole dancing and stuff like that too, didn't you? That's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah, That's a good I still exercise do that. Thing, though, right? That helps. Like, I, I think a lot of people don't uh, understand how much, like, just any exercise at all just could help relieve stress. So, mm -hmm. aside from exercise, do you have any tips to relieve stress after a stressful, like, a tough day trading? Yeah, um, go on walks. As lame as that sounds, I, I pretty much go for a one hour walk every day after the market. Oh, wow. Yeah, just to think, reflect on trading, and you you feel a lot better. Um, after you done the walk, because you're like all by yourself, right? You're like in your mind a lot, thinking, and it forces you to be alone and reflect on what you did well, what you did wrong. Yeah. Rain yeah, or like shine? That. Sorry? Rain or shine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Vancouver, <laughs> raining, you still walk, and we don't use umbrellas. <laughs> yeah. So, so now that you need... Yeah, go for oh, it. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, so you said earlier that you're super like organized and like you have everything like set in place. And I feel like listening to you, like you have your trading and now you have your YouTube and like, what are your goals with both of those going forward? Like, what is it? What is the next five years look like for you? Mm -hmm. So for my trading, I still want to trade daily, but I want to start. I kind of started dabbling with um, selling options on the side. That's kind of, I want to create like an income generating portfolio in which you kind of, it's like a, you kind of set it and forget it for a couple of months because you're selling the premiums. So I kind of started watching some videos, learning a few things. So I want to do that on the side because as the more you make, whether it's from trading <clears throat> or your businesses, the, the, the higher risk you have. And I don't really want to keep on risking that much money. What? I used to be able to risk 50% of my portfolio. Now I don't really want to do that because the more you make, the 50% becomes a lot more. So that's kind of what I want to do and, and start diversifying more into other asset classes, whether it be real estate or other businesses. I don't want too much money tied in my trading account anymore because I think with the, especially what happened the last two years with the crazy, crazy low floaters, like the, the AMTD, the, the TOP, the, there's a couple of trader friends I talked to. Unfortunately, they made a lot of money, but they kind of blew up just for with one trade. So that kind of like, I, I'm sure they'll be okay to make that back, but they lost a lot, right? So for me, I'm just, I just also realized that the, us traders, we are our, the number one threat to our trading account. So I just don't want to put that much money in my trading account anymore. Um, I want to start diversifying and put it somewhere else where I cannot touch it. So that's kind of my goal, at least with trading, um, is to actively trade less and be even more selective with the trades I take. Um, now with YouTube, um, I do, YouTube is where kind of like, I don't really care if I make money or not. With YouTube, the like, all, like I have a team now, so I kind of reinvest everything back into my team. So I want to do a lot more like traveling and trading content. Um, that's some, that kind of something I want to talk to you about later, Alex. Um, so I want to do more of that. So I'm less tied down to my office in Vancouver and be more kind of have a more global footprint with the content I create and like visiting a lot of traders around the world. That's kind of what I want to do uh, next step with the YouTube side. That's great. I mean, is there anywhere special that you've been aiming to go to that you haven't gone to yet? Uh, in terms of, tr well, I think eventually I'm going to start out with like the North American cities and then eventually I want to hit up like Dubai, Singapore. There's a lot of big traders there, yes. a lot in the in the futures space. So I want to see them and see how they trade and what is it like living there and trading there versus in North America. Mm -hmm. I think Makes that's sense. cool. I like it. 
I can't even imagine what it would be like to live that life because I've been like in Boston so long and like I like travel and stuff. But like, has that always been a passion for you? Like always wanting to actually travel and like, because I think part of becoming a trader is having the freedom, right? And you're, you have the ability to make money wherever you want to be. And also with your other job with YouTube, you can kind of do that too. Was that something you wanted to do forever? Or is that just kind of more of a recent thing now that you've kind of like quote unquote made it and like just have like a new kind of goal and aspiration? Um, I think I really only started doing that in, I started doing that during pandemic, travel a bit more. Um, but I don't, I think I, I kind of realized with all the stuff I've done, whether it's VFX or flipping furniture, <laughs> it like, <laughs> Like I'll do that for a certain phase. So I don't know if there's anything I will do forever. Even even with trading, like, you know, trading, I think I will evolve. Eventually, who knows, I might stay, I, I might stop day trading and just swing trade and sell options, who knows? Um, so I just know that if there's something I'm very interested in, I'm gonna do that to the best of my ability for you know, a couple of years and then see what's next. Um, so. Yeah, I've just been kind of following what I really want to do and what I'm passionate about. And traveling, trading, at this right now, that's kind of what I want to do. Is Would you say that traveling is like your favorite hobby outside of trading? Or do you have any other hobbies that you like to focus on when you're not trading? Um, so pole dancing is one. I still do that. Um, it's really fun, but also actually really dangerous. Um, at the really? Same How? Time. Well you if if you lose your grip you can fall right oh, i'm just like um, screw your head up you're right? falling yeah, yeah, in yeah, some yeah. very odd positions yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that hurts, everything else just on top of you crushing your body and it's game over <laughs> sounds like you're speaking from experience yeah <laughs> you got him there. You got him there. well i attempted and that's pretty much what happened <laughs> <laughs> at least you tried did you make some money no, no. I got a lot of pity. Yeah. I got a lot of pity, though. Yeah. That, that paid for itself in the long run. I, that's pretty much how I got married, I think, actually. That's how I met my wife. I was injured uh -huh. after attempting a pole dance move. And then, yeah, I was like, you like what you see? Sign here. Press hard. Three copies. You scammed it real good then, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> would you say that it's been or has it been hard to kind of like find a partner or like dating wise like what has that been like trading because i know like for most guys that i know that are trading it's been like really difficult if not Wait, like, really why i want to know. know a lot of people that really struggle with like relationships and stuff like that especially in trading because like you're trading all day and then sometimes you don't want to talk to anyone or sometimes oh. you don't want to um, like I have a girlfriend myself and my girlfriend just kind of gets it, you know, like if, in, if I'm in a bad mood, like she loves to read. So she's like, I'm going to read. So like, that's kind of like how we kind of manage that, which is super good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like for you, like, has it been hard or has it just been like easy, like anything else, you know? I would say it's, it's not hard now. In the beginning when I was struggling with trading, I would say it's to like kind of before and after, right? Before when you're struggling with trading, you're really insecure. Like there's a shame when you're losing money day in and day out. You're ashamed of yourself. So even if you try to go and meet people, whether you're a man or woman, you just feel really insecure. And when you are insecure, that kind of carries out to like how you interact with other, the other people. So obviously it was really, really crap when I first was, was, when I was in that phase. And then I would say it got a lot better um but i'm really introvert so i don't like talking to people <laughs> so so when i would say one when, when i feel like talking to people it's not it's it's easy but when i'm in that phase where i just don't want to talk to anyone then obviously i'm not even trying so but when yeah. you get to go on youtube and your personality on youtube uh -huh. is so bubbly uh -huh. and bright Right. What was it that you had to do? Did you have to physically tell yourself, like, this is a character I'm playing, this is a role, and I need to be this? I don't get to be reclusive and just be by myself. I have to be out there. No, no, no. I think for introverts, um, it's like 
you're at home, I would say four out of four days out of the, the week. Then when you do go out or when I do go on camera, I'm like, yes, I like conserve all these energy. Oh, and last oh of OK. Yeah. So I, I feel really happy talking to you guys. I haven't seen anyone the last three days. I didn't talk to anyone. So. So, yeah, that's why I'm like, okay, I have a podcast scheduled today. Three days yeah. before, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Everybody who's texting her gets left on red. They're so pissed. They're like, what the? Yeah, yeah. Mom, I'll call you back after this. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, before we wrap up, Shay, I wanted to ask you, do you have any questions for us? Is there anything that we can answer or any, anything that's particularly on your mind? Um. Yeah, how's 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 your trading this year? I know you guys focus on small caps, which yeah. I like look at once a while now, but not a whole lot. How's the small caps this year? So small caps, the beginning of the year started off really strong for me. Okay. Um, I turned my thirty-five. I, I do like a challenge at the beginning of the year where I start with like a thirty-five thousand dollar account and I see how far I could grow it. And at the beginning of the year, I was able to grow that thirty-five thousand into a million in fifty-five mm -hmm. days, which is like a record. It's like the most unbelievable thing ever for me. But towards like the middle of the year ish, like I would say maybe about like after the first quarter, I started to get a little bit sloppy in my trading because I was so confident. I was so overconfident that I started oversizing on some stocks. I started getting a little bit sloppy on some stocks. And towards the middle, I kind of got, you know, up, down, up, down. And now um, what I'm trying to do this year for myself is I'm trying to size down more. And focus more on finding internal happiness outside of my PL because I would judge my happiness on the day based on how much money I made, right? It's it's pretty sad to say, but like that's what I used to do. If I had a green day, I'd be extra happy. If I had a red day, I'd be extra sad. And I felt like that that was kind of controlling my life for a little bit too long. So now I'm kind of focused on sizing less, making a little bit less money, but focusing on finding happiness outside the market. So that's why, you know, eventually I want to move to Florida. That's mm -hmm. why, you know, eventually I'm going to take it a little bit more serious with my girlfriend. Um, but aside from that, um, I've it's been a little bit, summer has kind of been a little bit up down. I would say the beginning of the year was strong and now it's kind of just like chopping around and yeah. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, for me, it's been uh, pretty well. I had a big kind of like last like three years of my trading where like I really like did really well. Um, and now I've been focusing on like swing trading and uh, uh, more kind of like strategies like that, you know, because like as you make more money, like, you know, you just don't want to scalp for like 10 cents anymore. No offense yeah. to those people, you know, but <laughs> um, that's kind of what I've kind of been working on. James? Okay. Uh, my biggest thing this year is like I'm I've always been like I'm going to knock on every piece of what I have. Like I've always been very consistent. And my biggest thing this year is just kind of like fighting greed. And, you know, we're very lucky and, like, I think we're very blessed to be able to make, like, a few thousand dollars a day, like, kind of no problem. Yeah. And it's just kind of fighting that urge to, like, really push myself and, like, just being really happy and enjoying what I'm doing now. So, but it's been good. And the market's been all right. So, okay. I was probably the least active one out of all three, out, out of all four of us. For 2020 and 2021, I burnt myself out. Mm. I was pushing as hard as I could with the large caps which is what I do is large caps and options. Mm -hmm. I was pushing really hard. And uh, a buddy of mine that we trade together, both of us just, we burn out. And for 22, I pretty much did very, very, very little, like the bare minimum. And then in 23, man, we moved from Texas to Colorado. And I don't know what it is, but this time zone just works better for me. And it like reignited, reignited all that burning urge to blow all my money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gamble, risk, you know, you know, bet on crazy shit. And um yeah, let's come back to small caps, Joe. <laughs> what? I said, why don't you come back to small caps with me? No, because we did no. so well the first I time. Yeah, he's too busy betting on horses in the background. <laughs> I, man, I had I had James transitioned for a moment. I had him I had him thinking straight for a little bit, and then Carvana happened to him, and he gave up on me. Carvana was great. That's <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man no, i have to say i this is kind of a quick change but like i really do appreciate you coming on uh shay because i i'll be like scrolling on instagram or youtube and like i see all your videos all the time and it's like it's cool by doing these podcasts that we actually get to like talk to you and like talk to these yeah. people and like there are real people behind like the the trading videos and all that stuff so i really appreciate you coming on yeah thank you for having me yeah that was awesome this is awesome Perfect. thank you thank you yeah, and it's obviously it's nice to. I met Alex. That was fun. We had uh, you and Bao. I want to say that I, you know, when I first started, like I obviously didn't have the YouTube channel till 2019. So I've been trading for eight years. So from 2014 to 2019, the five years, I kind of just like looking at you guys silently, um, uh, quietly in the background, like on Twitter. And I follow you and Bao and a couple other traders. It's it's been really, really um, great to see your progress, what you and Bao have done. And you guys were also my inspirations in my early years as well. Wow. So I just want to say that. And awesome. Bao, Bao, uh, meeting Bao and then him visiting in Vancouver, that was also, I, I don't know if I've told him this. So that's why I was hoping you'll be here. I'll tell him next time I see him. Like he, he is also, because because I don't see a lot of the Asian traders until recently. Yes. So for me to see someone like him, this is like eight years ago. That was that, that also made me feel like, oh, I, I can also do this. Like he has black hair, I have black hair. <laughs> he looks like that, I look like that. <laughs> I could do this. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's, that's kind of how everyone passes the elevator back down. I'm sure yeah. you inspire so many female traders as well. You know, mm. there's probably so many people that hit you up and like, hey, like, you're a girl. I'm a girl. Like I can do it too. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Like I think in trading besides the money, meeting traders and where, and learning about everyone's stories and where they came from, how they found trading. That's been one of the most enjoyable experiences um, in terms of this industry. Yeah. Love it. That's Love really it. cool. Thank you, Shay. Thank you for coming on. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. And thank you, Joe, for the dad jokes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's his specialty. That's all. That's all he's got. That's all I got is self-deprecating humor. That's it. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs>